Morning everyone. Um, weekend of mixed on pitch, off pitch drama with Man United. We'll look at the off field stuff uh, in a little bit. But first of all, let's look at what happened on the pitch. We played Newport County uh, in the FA Cup. We won 4-2. We're through to the next round. Um, for what it's worth, I, I watched the game. My opinion is we played an awful lot better against Newport than we did against Wigan. They looked like there was a lot more cohesion in the team. It was, that's our best eleven that we played yesterday. Um, I'd, I'd, I'd have Wan Bazaka ahead of Delo, but if we're playing a team that's lower down, I'd, I'd probably agree with having Delo in there because he brings a little bit more going forward. And you could argue the goalkeeper, but I don't know, <laughs> I don't know about that at the moment. Um, I think that's probably our best eleven to play that game. And there was some good, good interchanging, good, good interplay. Difficult to judge it. You're playing Newport. I'm not going to get carried away, but for, for 25 minutes, we thought we looked we looked very good. Scored two really good goals, um, and then they score a free goal, and the whole thing changes. And we didn't cope very well with that for for 10, 15 minutes. We we should have scored just before half time. Fernandez had a chance. It was quite a poor finish actually because it was a good height for the keeper. If he scores that, it's three one. It's game over. If Garnacho scores, well, it's 2-0 and he hits the bar instead of squaring it, it's over. But those things didn't happen and therefore it's 2-1 at half-time. They go in galvanised and obviously that's football, that's psychology of footballs like that. They come back out, they score again and then that's a test, especially for our team because I think we have a really soft underbelly and that's probably why it got to 2-2 in the first place. But we gathered ourselves, the quality we've got ahead of them showed through and, um, and we ended up coming through and winning the game. Listening to some stuff afterwards, you'd think, you know, you think we lost. Um, I'm hard on United, un unapologetically hard on United, but I, I heard words like embarrassing. I don't think that was an embarrassing performance at all. It wasn't great, but we got through. And also, you got to just acknowledge where we are and who we are. Um, this is this season isn't that that dissimilar to some, to some way of um, the 1990 FA Cup win when... Okay, we were further down the league that year. But I, I think we lost. I was looking at this the other day. We're on course this season, if we keep going the way we are, to lose as many games this season as we lost that season in the league, which is pretty alarming, really. Because um, we were a lower Division One team at that point, and we're, I'd say we're probably about a mid-table Premier League team, although we're so, ever so slightly higher than that. But... That's where we're at. We're, we're not. We're not going to win the FA Cup um, unless we get very favourable draws. But in, people forget. I think in 1990, the hardest draw we had was the third round against Nottingham Forest because at that point they were a very, very handy top flight team, and it was away, and we were in terrible form. Um, and I think I'm right in saying Clough never won the FA Cup, so it was a big, big game for Forest. <clears throat> um, then we had. In the fourth round, Hereford away, which is a similar type of game to yesterday. Then we had Newcastle, but Newcastle at the time were um, what is now the Championship. Then we had Sheffield United, who, again, the equivalent of what is the Championship, all the way, but nonetheless, decent draws. Uh, Oldham, who were towards the bottom of the top flight team in the semi-final. It took us two goes to get through that. And then Crystal Palace in the final, who had been beat 9-0 by Liverpool earlier that season. And it took us two goes of that. Um, so if we get draws like that, then maybe we could do something in the cup. But we ain't beating anyone decent. Uh, to the point where I really hope Bristol City beat Nottingham Forest and we've got them in the next round. Um, so there's nothing to see here. We we got through against a, in, a, in a relatively tough situation. And, and I thought there was a lot more cohesion than there was against Wigan. If I'm, if I'm honest, um, the other stuff that happened at the weekend is a bit more contentious. So, Marcus Rashford was out in Belfast on Wednesday, which apparently was a night off, and that was okay. Um, he apparently also was out in Belfast on Thursday night, which was the night before training, because he's supposed to be training on Friday. He. I don't know where training was supposed to be, but I'm assuming it wasn't in Belfast. So he was in Belfast in the early hours of Friday morning and he phoned in sick and couldn't go to training. 
there's pictures of him out, there's videos of him out. It's a bit of a, he's dropped a bollock. Um, so the reaction from the fan base on both extremes is, is for me ridiculous. You've got people saying, right now we need to sell him. No, we needed to sell him because he's crap and his attitude stinks. And this aligns with his attitude stinking. Um, we don't need to sell him because he was in Belfast and he missed one training session pulling a sickie. That's not the reason we need to sell him. It could be the tipping point for some people. But you don't sell someone just on that. And you've got the other side, um, the Marcus Rashford fan brigade, who are saying, well, have you never heard of George Best? Yeah, I've heard of him. He's one of the best players that ever played the game. He was a complete genius. Marcus Rashford isn't in the top 1,000 players to have ever played the game. George Best could turn up half-pissed and score two goals and run the right-back ragged, right ragged and then go over to the right and run the left-back ragged and then drag the ball back and beat them two or three times and do things Marcus Rashford couldn't even dream of. So... Don't compare George Best to Marcus Rashford. Um, you know, I'll give you Brian Robson. Brian Robson, by all accounts, was a, you know, he liked to drink, to put it mildly. But again, by all accounts, in training, um, he was the one that was leading the pack on the two or three mile run that they had to go on because Ferguson wanted him to sweat the booze out from the night before because he knew they'd been out. And, and Robson, with that dogged, bloody mindedness and being a leader, thought, I've got to show an example. And there's your difference. I've got to show an example. Norman Whiteside, loved by United fans. Ferguson came in, and I know Whiteside had his injuries, and there's debate as to whether Ferguson let Whiteside go because of injury, because of his lifestyle, boozing and stuff like that, or a little bit of both. But Whiteside, again, liked to drink, and Ferguson, by all accounts, wasn't kind of looking for an excuse to get rid of him. Whiteside had more talent in his left foot than Rashford has in his whole body. So we're not comparing apples for apples. And then some people actually put um, on social media, if you never, you never pulled a sickie because you've been out the night before. When I was 26, yeah, definitely. Loads of times. Difference being, I was on 14 grand a year. Not really the same, is it? So I think what we're seeing here with Rashford is a complete lack of lack of awareness, lack of reading of the situation because I'm going to use an inflammatory word but it's my my um, assessment of him is that he's arrogant and the, I'll, I'll, I'll clarify and qualify that I, I think um, he appears to believe he's better than he is I think he's got ideas above what he's capable of doing um, in, in both terms of ability and status. Um, I don't think he thinks he's accountable to the standards that are, um, are being expected of him and that he can, by the look of it, he thinks he can do what he wants. And this is before the Belfast thing. This is a judgment I've made by watching him on the pitch, watching his body language, watching the fact I think it, it's, he, he doesn't run, he doesn't doesn't track back, um, chooses not to go into 50-50s, so I'd say ducks out of 50-50s, which is unforgivable, absolutely unforgivable. Someone did that on my under-13s team, I'd pull them, I'd just I'd bring them off. Um, that's under-13s, so I'm not having it from someone that's getting paid more than 300 grand a week. Um, and, and seems to have a little bit of a, a resentment about what people are now realising about him, which is that he's not good enough, and, and rather than have some humility and buckle down and try and work hard, his attitude to it is, I'm going to make silly gestures when I score a goal for the first time in God knows how long. So he's arrogant. And when you become arrogant, or you are arrogant, you lack awareness of the situations that are around you, because you don't think you need to be aware of those things. But the situation around him is, we've just got new people who've, who've basically bought the football side, the control of the football side of United, if, if what we're led to believe to be true is true. And their whole mission statement is that they're going to root out the problems at the club. 
they're going to um, look at players on high wages and if they're worth it or not. Um, they, they've brought in people like Barada, who, when you listen to his interviews or you know, um, videos of him when he's talking to the guy, at City, the, the director of football at City, is very much about getting the bang for your buck. So that the whole ethos with David Brailsford, with Jim Ratcliffe, Dale, David Brailsford's a marginal gains guy who's looking for small, consistent habits, again, looking at people. The whole ethos is about rooting those problems out. You don't have to look very far. You know, you're putting it in their face. You've let people take pictures of you and videos of you. You've, you know, you know that you get that you're going to get found out. You know, if you're in Belfast on a night out on Thursday, forward slash Friday morning, you got training on Friday morning, and, and then you call in sick. There's people everywhere that are looking for you to trip up. So. It's that lack of awareness, and actually, just, again, it's just max of arrogance, just that lack of care. Like, whatever, I can pretty much do what I want. So, I'm not really sure what he has to do to be treated the same as everybody else. Being dropped against Newport, neither in nor there, doesn't make any statement whatsoever. It needs to be that. He's held to account on everything, on the football things that you know that he's not. He shouldn't be in the team anyway, regardless of what's happened last week. He shouldn't be in the team. He shouldn't be anywhere near the team. I've said before, look, if you're a young player in the team, like let's say Kobe Main is probably a good example because he's a local lad, um, growing up in the academy and starting to make it through the team. You probably, if you're looking up at someone, you're looking for Marcus Rashford. So you look up and see, right, the highest paid player in the team, the star boy of the team. United have made him not. He's never never earned that that um, status. If you, nonetheless, let's look at his habits. He doesn't run. Um, he bottles out of fifty fifty tackles. He um, has an absolutely atrocious attitude and body language. He can call in sick for training. He goes out clubbing after we've been beaten by Man City, and he stunk the place out with his performance on that day. He turned up late to a game last season and had to be benched. Uh, he overslept, apparently. Uh, that's all fine if you if you if you're absolutely smashing it. It's not fine actually, but you know, um, if you can go, yeah, but I do this, like George Best, for example. This kid doesn't do anything, and. The other big difference is that George Best had some integrity in the end that he went, I can't really be arsed with this anymore. I'm not just going to steal your money from you. I can't be asked to play at this level. I can't be asked to turn up to, to training. I can't be asked to not drink before games. I can't be asked to put you ahead of, you know, a, a night a night with a Miss World or whatever, um, I'll bugger off to America. At least he had the integrity to do that. Um, and some would say it was a wasted talent, but he did it on his own terms and he didn't cheat anybody, football-wise, other than maybe himself, but he would say he didn't. Um, Rashford is very much stealing a living. and. I would say for Ineos, and this is way before what happened last week, if you want to make a statement about your intent, there's one there. He, he's, he's going to be goading you to make that decision. And and if you don't, I personally just don't take it seriously. I don't take, it, I don't take what they're doing seriously. Because if you've come in and you've, you've gone on about standards and you've gone on about, you know, trying to bring us back to the best and making football a priority and all those types of things and then you then you continue to have him uh, uh, now it's just words so there's a very easy decision to make there it, it was easy before any of this happened it's even easier now um you talk about getting rid of Casemiro and Varane because they're on too much money and you've got you've got Rashford doing that it's just you know and he's on the money he's on 
So um, if you want, you don't, have to, you don't have to root it out. It's there right in front of you. So that's a, it's a big call for me, that. Uh, I watch with uh, interested, int I'm interested to see what happens. Glazers out.